Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Mondays with Mindy. Christian, say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. (laughs) Today's episode features a conversation with Steve Braun. Steve is a partner in the BGB studio, a home for actors to take class, get coaching, and be a part of a community of proud creatives. Steve came into my life almost six years ago at a time when I really needed to find that community that for me is so much more easily accessible in New York City. In a city like Los Angeles, where the business of show can negate the artistry, I joined his Wednesday workout, a group of working actors that meets to do just the work and play. More importantly, and most importantly, it reminds us all once a week that we are storytellers and creatives, whether or not we are working, book the job, nail the audition. Steve was born in Winnipeg and became a very successful actor in his own right, right out of school. His credits include the television shows Immortal and Twins and the feature films The Trip, Harold and Kumar Go to White Castle, The Skulls Three, just to name a few. Steve also found success and and actually still does dabble in voiceover work. The casting director, Risa Brayman Garcia, the BG of BGB, cast Steve many times, and they both found that they spoke the same language about acting. She would push him in auditions, and like Steve, he pushed right back. (laughs) While doing some teaching on his own, they finally collaborated in 2012, and by 2015, they had 19 classes a week, for almost 400 actors. Wow. Which is not nothing, especially <laughs> in this town. Seriously. Along with, yeah, along with classes and individual acting coaching, Steve has moved into meditation, career, and life design coaching, not just for the individual, but now also assisting companies. Steve also has been trained in martial arts and has consistently worked at it for 25 years. He's a master. He would abhor that I said that, but he is. <laughs> he currently lives um, in Vancouver with his wife, Amber, and daughters, June and Penny, frequently visiting Los Angeles to do the work in person. Amazing. I am so excited, Christian, that not just you, but some of our listeners are about to um, witness, hear, listen, see a conversation with truly one of the most special people in my life. Amazing. I'm excited to meet him. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our pleasure to welcome to the show, Steve Braun. Welcome, Steve. Hi. Hello. (laughs) Thank you for having me. Of course. Um, Yes, I needed, you're always required (laughs) for anything I'm doing, period, full stop. Anyway, um, so we start each podcast by uh, getting into this little canister and just randomly asking five questions. You ready? I'm in. Okay. Inner drum roll. Uh, Steve, what's your guilty pleasure? Um, Smarties, but not the American Smarties, which um, are something wholly different and disgusting, but there's a Canadian (laughs) Commonwealth Smartie. Um, Yeah. Huh. Is that like a wine gum? Could you buy them? No, it's not. It's no. What is what is the taste thrill of it? Like to an M and M, not a peanut, but but better, like far. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, actually, I think I do know what those are. You do? I, those are, yeah, they kind of look like spree, okay. in, but like tinier spree. They got like the candy shell, the multi. Yep. I know exactly That's what those are. One. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. All right. Um, of course, excluding me, but um, <laughs> who is the most fascinating person you've met? Um, my mother. Oh. I like oh, that. Tell me more. Wow. Tell me more. Right. <laughs> Talk about a deep dive. Damn. Yeah. I mean, somebody who works with a lot of celebrity talent. <laughs> are, and we, are we? <laughs> right, right, right. right. That, compared to my mother, they don't really uh, hold the candle. I mean, are we explaining these answers or is this just uh, like I, the lightning uh, round? We can do whatever we want. Mindy <laughs> wants an answer. Sure. I mean, I'd like a, a little splain. So I think most of it is that I know her the most and the longest. And so there's probably more data from which to, to draw conclusions of all kinds. Uh, she's a brilliant, fascinating woman, uh, um, you know, and interconnected in interesting ways to me and my journey and my past. So there's a lot there to mine. And moreover, I think once we all get into that um, that investigation of our ancestors, those who came before, as they relate also to us, all of a sudden you start exploring the universality of the human experience, which is why I went there. And you also. Okay. I, I, well, it goes without <laughs> it goes saying, but saying, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah wildly. Uh, what's the best advice you've been given and who gave it? 
Um, I think, uh, I think it's my grandmother again. I don't know why, just there's something about these times and where you caught me just now that I'm very much uh, thinking oh, yeah. about my family. Um, my grandmother who, uh, has passed uh, many years ago, um, in, in her language, Plautich, it's just patience, the adult, uh, which to me is not just like, Hey, just, just chill out. It's, it's something deeper about doing less and, um, and allowing things to come to you. Uh, and and it, who gave it, I think, is a really important point because how they live their lives and, and the example that they show really informs the advice that they give, right? Um, right. I got advice from Christy Alley once uh, about how to fix my life, which is not advice that I would take. Um, but for my <laughs> grandmother, um, you know, that's it's a different story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Concur. Steve? Bless her. Yes. What is your best habit and what is your worst habit? Um, I think I'm going to offer a callback here. The worst habit is my relationship to sugar, you know, the Smarties. I, there's <laughs> something about that I will go there in times of stress, like lately. It just fills that yeah, fucking void. It just makes everything okay for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's a crash. Mm -hmm. And I've always been that way my whole life. It's been that relationship to sugar. Um, and, uh, the best is, is Qigong. It's, uh, meditation, Qigong, uh, meditation in action, you know, uh, that as a practice when I'm doing it as a habit and lately it's, you know, been spotty, uh, it just changes everything. It just changes everything. And so is that how it? you define it for yourself? Is that meditation in action? Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. And, and, you know, again, notions of meditation, people start thinking about like shaving right. your head and sitting on a, you know, some mountaintop somewhere. Um, and it really is this Thich Nhat Hanh notion of, of peace in every step that you can find meditation in any activity. So for me, studying martial arts, right. which led to meditation in Qigong, um, that practice can be uh, something you engage in while you're drinking tea or while you, you know, doing a podcast, anything can be turned into a meditation. Uh, yeah. but, but that practice in particular uh, is uh, amazing for me. And so you've told me 25 years you've been, you've been practicing. What drew you to it? I mean, what, why of uh, everything? Toxic masculinity. I mean, that's, that's just what it was. Like I was a, a, a hypersensitive, fragile kid that uh, didn't understand mm -hmm. that that was power. Uh, but growing up in a world right. where my dad was, you better toughen up. And like, it's that sort of world, right? The expectation yeah. of straight white cisgendered able-bodied men to be dominators to be you know colonizers and so but i didn't feel that <laughs> way so you better take martial arts so that you don't get beat up and have your you know have shame befall you or whatever so uh so started it from that to make myself strong when i felt weak and any amount of kicking and screaming and punching and breaking boards didn't change the fact that i felt weak uh, so so then mm. eventually um i had to get super intense with it uh, and that just continued to not work until I met this this uh, um, Shaolin monk who introduced me to meditation, and then the whole thing changed. Um, so yeah, yeah, you are the second close person in my life where it has changed after meeting that kind of person. Yeah, their lives kind of just pivoted. So there's something to that, obviously. I think yeah. so. Yeah, there was something, and you have to be ready for it too. Like had had I been offered that opportunity. 10 years earlier, I would have told him to go away. Hmm. That's kind of All right. Too. If you could have dinner with any three people, who would they be and why? Um, living or dead? I love these questions and I hate those Same. questions. Yeah, so right, just, right, just right. in the moment, my, what's your my answer? Least favorite yeah. and my favorite. Sure. Yeah. Um, are we doing living or dead or living? Be whatever. I don't whatever? care. Yeah. Wild, yeah. Um, I'd say, um, I'd say my mom, uh, I'd say, you know what, actually my answer right now, yeah, bringing up, bringing right now. all the feels, uh, is my wife and two daughters and my mom. That's it. Wow. That's perfect. Nice. I don't even have to ask why. How about them? Well, it's, it's been too long since that's happened because of this. I pandemic. bet. Yeah. I was I trying to go is to it, some, huh, it, who would I, but that I just want to sit down with my mom, family, yes. my mother and who, daughters. Uh, that is going to happen sooner than later, correct? Uh, here's hoping, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, I don't know if you know this or not, but I Christian 
suggested that we do this because the one thing that I was sort of pining for and actually quite blew over was this uh, missing connecting with other creatives. I tend to yeah. feed that. I, I don't do well on my own. Um, I, I work well with others. Um, and that includes just day-to-day living. And so in talking to creatives of all kind, and I, I think everybody's a creative, I mean, yeah. my personal humble opinion. Sure. So we talk about this creative process, how anybody defines it, because I, I think it's different for everyone. And even those words sound a little pithy, but yeah. how do you define your creative process, how you move through the world? Yeah, I, I think it, it, it starts for me with an understanding, again, apropos this discussion of the confines of uh, the, the pressure put upon our creative processes growing up for various reasons, right? And I'm like Captain Privilege and I felt like I had these these forces. So I think it's the, the, the first part of it for me is understanding and reminding myself that I am hypersensitive, that I am a creative person, that I need creativity or else my life gets bad. So that's the, like acceptance, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> Accepting that I have a problem yeah. is the first step to that. <laughs> and, and then understanding that that, that that acceptance can't stay there. It has to be put into action but specifically into a practice of some kind. And and again, for me, martial arts, uh, Qigong, that is a creative endeavor for me. But but I agree with you, like the next step of it after that, and it's particularly poignant, I think during these times is that uh, it has to happen within community for me. It, it can't just be me, you know, writing uh, ad nauseum in, in a room by myself. I need to feel that and feed off of as well. So in terms of the creative process for me, um, I need to be in and around people who are expressing and exploring their unique emotional experience in the world. Uh, I need to be challenged in that regard by people's expressions. Um, and, and, and the creation of, of the acting studio was that for me, is that for me, uh, so that I get to be around it all the time. Um, and, and so as I shifted from get ahead of myself, as I shifted from being an actor to mm-hmm. being a moderator of the work, Um, I think I'm realizing that my creative process isn't necessarily about um, being front and center in that process, but, but I really value the collaboration or the ability to make space for other people. Like the, the, the sort of jazz band of it all, where Mm -hmm. you're going to have your moment and I'll step back and wonder at what you're doing and create sort of a foundation for you within which you can solo it. And then I'll have a moment, but mostly it's, it's in that group. I think that's really important for me. Yeah. And and this trajectory that you kind of have been on or ch- have chosen, really, which I, I find so much power in um, your choice of leaving acting and picking up this other way of of being a creative. Yeah. Um, and we've talked about, well, I've asked you many times because I want to act across from you so badly at some point in our lives together on this planet, but um, that you don't you you don't miss any of it. Um the actor part of it, that, that outlet. Um, tell yeah. me about that trajectory and you know, people who don't know you. Yeah. And again, like all these things that they tie in for me that, that I, I started as an actor mostly cause I was running from, I don't know what, uh, a broken home or blah, blah, blah. And, and I, you know, I was a musician growing up. I, I, I appreciate that creative expression and, and really fell into acting. A friend of mine was making a movie and like, it just sort of happened that way. And I started working a little bit and, that took me to various places. Um, and, but when I think of like the actual craft of it, what it is at its essence, um, that wasn't introduced to me till I was on the TV series, you know, which was like a little bit of, it was, it was odd Hmm. to me. So what I, what I, my experience of acting was auditioning, navigating the business, uh, you know, trying to be cute and charming and little 20 second bites. And like, maybe they book you and like, it's that kind of vibe. Yeah. And I think what was most appealing to me in it, again, was this notion of having my humanity reflected back at me, reflecting humanity, hmm. that exploration of the human experience, you know, like the, the, the deeper sort of stuff that was far beyond the industry. Like the industry can't give you that for the most part. There's little moments, but but like the, the pure art of it, I think, um, is something that, that happens often outside of the industry. And the industry t- tries to codify it and, and, and find, <laughs> find, package it and whatnot, right? So... So that's what was sustaining for me. So that when the industry slowed down in 2006 or seven or the writer's strike or whatever mm-hmm. else, I found, found myself without that ego stroke of the paycheck or being able to go to the dinner party and say, I'm on this show or my episode right. of blah, 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 or whatever. Um, and, and so uh, I 
sort of had that gut check moment of what is this actually for me? And, and what I needed or else my life would get bad was what I mentioned before being in and around yeah. the work of, of, of hypersensitive people exploring the human experience. Like that's, uh, I will be doing that till I'm dead because I have to, or else my life gets bad. So, so it, w- it was a clear choice in many ways that once almost as if COVID, you know, in, in the same way that COVID did, once the paycheck was removed because there was nothing happening, once the ego stroke was removed, I was left with uh, the kernel of what would be the rest of my experience with acting, which was um, creating and maintaining spaces for people in which to to explore their own voices and express their own voices. Uh, but unlike I've been trying to explain this not only to Christian, my parents and people who aren't in the industry and even people who are, you know, you, you talk about an acting class or a weekly, what I love. I mean, one of the first things I loved was just the fact that you, you called what I'm in the Wednesday workout. I just appreciate that so much because that's exactly what it is. It's just once a week getting access to your emotions and expressing yourself and playing and connecting with another person who does the same thing. So when you talk about an acting class, which I don't call what we do anyway, but most people's vision of that is something very intense um, and um, cultish, (laughs) secret, you know, and it sort of isn't. It's the radical opposite, which, you know, I mean, the fact that you even do this work with heads of companies or, you know, people who aren't actors, right? If you can tell, explain how you would explain the work to me or a newbie when I first came into BGB? Yeah, sure. I mean, so if we back up, like oftentimes acting classes take this largely like patriarchal Western structure. <laughs> and, and and frankly, if, if the Time's Up Me Too movement and, and the re- recent focus on, you know, racial inequality in our industry, all that has revealed uh, anything. It's that, you know, the, the entire industry, which includes the acting studio acting class industry is fraught with all of these challenging problematic hierarchies where there's this guru at the top and and yes. that guru creates this checklist this technique and you get the gold star if you check all the boxes of their technique etc like it's it's very much a top down hang, hang on to our power sort of situation an egoic structure one might say you know and mm. and what I've found in the way that uh, I have learned, be it music or acting or, or martial arts or whatever, is that that creates disciples. But at a certain point, you're going to have to offer some leadership. You're going to have to be able to allow someone to spread their wings, find their own voice and do something different. Like to me, an acting teacher is defined by the way that they let someone go, right? Like if that's an affront to their ego, that's problematic. So, so I've been playing with this notion for 15 years. 20 years of, um, and it's a Taoist notion, I think, of the the master creating as much space as possible, like Mm -hmm. having the lightest possible touch and also guiding someone to, you know, whatever is in their way and, and, and having an expectation that they have to address that on some level, but I won't be the one to kick down their walls. I won't be the one to scream at them and tell them to, you know, put their, you know, dead father in the chair over there and tell him how you feel and you weep. And I right. pat myself on the back and say, this is active, right? Because it's abusive, right. it's violence, but also you're not going to be able to access that without me. So if I have some ego troubles that might be appealing to me, well, you need me. Um, I have two kids and I don't want to have that relationship with anybody else, right? Like I don't, I just don't want right. that. <laughs> uh, and it's not healthy. And, and so what, I find is that the more space I give of a certain kind, like always presence, I'm always there, but the more Mm -hmm. space I give, the more uh, amazing, passionate, sensitive actors tend to fill that space with leadership. And they tend to dip their toe in the water and there tends to be less shame and less disconnection. And all of a sudden they're not dipping their toe, they're jumping in and all of a sudden they're jumping in every week and the jumps get from, you know, higher and higher and all of a sudden they are the industry and they decide to make their own stuff or they sit like, because they have right. been training that level of leadership. So, so in an acting class, when two actors finish a scene or an exercise and look to the teacher, like that's the moment, like what do you, what do you infuse mm-hmm. that moment with as a studio, as a teacher? Do I say, A, there is an objective truth, B, I know it and C, you do not. So let me tell you. 
<laughs> which is ridiculous, right? Because it's art. Nobody knows. Yeah. Or do or I what ask, you do? Well, I mean, it what, it's aspirational, right? I fail at this regularly, but but I'm more curious about where this lived in you so that you can lift yeah. the weights so that you can figure out for you. And, and I think, again, this is this is really important when it comes to people of color, LGBTQ plus folks, like women, people who have historically been excluded or historically have been told what acting is. Like if I have two trans actors of color in my class doing a scene, what the hell am I going to tell them about what acting is, right? That's their voice, their experience. It's not mine. Yeah. So I, I can only serve them by containing the space as best as I can, watching my bias, you know, which will come up, but watch it and allow them to dance. And that's it, right? Like, and, and other than that, I'm imposing a technique upon them that is right. bad for the world, I think. Well, I'll say as a participant and as a, a watcher, obviously you observe more of the class than you participate in Christian. And and again, I'll use Steve's exact word, you know, how did that feel? How'd that go? Oh, usually that's where we then end the scene, right? That's the question he'll ask. But it leads to much less self-indulgent acting, if you even want to define it as acting. Right. Uh, but we will for the purposes of this. But it's, it, it you know... You, in that you tend to not showboat mm -hmm. there's there's no reason for it right because you're not seeking approval from anyone we're all in this together kind of thing and it's becomes instead very i have found inspirational and aspirational work sure instead of uh emotionally not goal oriented you know so i have found the actors that i have gotten to play with um are are those less indulgent um I don't know how you would define it, other ways you would define it, but it's it, it's palpably different. Well, and um, I, will, I will say this, that like, so your group and you, you know, wildly talented. I mean, you have more talent than you could possibly use in a lifetime, Mindy. And so you don't need a structure that is that tight. You know, some people like me at 20 showing up saying, hey, I wanna act, I probably needed more structure, right? right. Like I got to meditation Meditation was taught, was introduced to me and I listened to it because it was given to me by someone who could break metal on his head, right? Like I needed that to go, oh yeah, he Got has it. license to operate here. He can tell me about <laughs> radical softness. That's fine because he knows because he's a tough guy, you know? So you don't, you show up not needing a structure. Um, you know, there's a loose one, but, but, but that class in particular, you in particular, I'm going to pull back all the way unless I'm needed. And sometimes, you know, I mean, Serena Williams has a coach. Like, what the hell does that guy do? I don't know. Yeah. But but has a coach. Eyes on the outside. No. Something to bounce something off. But if someone shows up, you know, 19, 20 years old, not knowing from acting, but want, want, wanting to do it, then the structure is perhaps a little bit more rigid. Uh, but always in the interest of eventually we're going to take this structure down. Yeah. Well, I think the biggest uh, gift you've given me uh, continually and continue to do so is confidence. And I don't mean bravado or ego. I mean, confidence in my ability to walk through the world and be a creative and show up and and use this as my tool. Uh, and that what ironically, and it isn't to you, but to our listeners out there has booked me better work, more work, different work, and just the way that uh, whether I book or not, that very fulfilling feeling um, when I get a chance to work, whether that be in class, at an audition, at an actual job, or just moving through the world uh, feeling like a proud creative. I, I think that is uh, what you impart, and it's in uniquely very special to you personally. Um, and I'm always so impressed at your level of tolerance and patience. Well, but you know, it's if you're going to do gonna it, go at it this way, you have to be patient, <laughs> right? Like if, if I get frustrated because someone's not getting to point, you know, yeah. F uh, quicker, then that's my, that's my frustration. You know, you can't hold back the class and we have to move on. But, but usually right. that lesson is great. Let's try again next week as opposed to you're nothing, you're worthless, you're like whatever, or why aren't you doing what I want you to do? Because like there is there is a click, there will be a click, but but for the most part, you know, mastery is mostly plateau. And so it's like you have mm. to hit your rock bottom to get to that place where, yeah. oh, I need to shift now. And when you shift from that place, it's uh, a much greater chance that that will be a really um, massive transformation that will take, you know, that will last. Yeah as opposed to them doing it for me or whatever. And so 
again, that's part of why I ask questions and some sort of attempt at the Socratic method, like after a scene to get it where the sort of root cause of what came up for them in that so that they can see clearly. Because if they see this barrier in front of them clearly, then they're less likely to run into it again. Because, and if they do, they're doing it willfully. And, and so, and, and again, that's none of my business, right? Like if you see that in right. front of you consistently, then on some level you need that. And so, you know, come back next week, yeah. you know, or but this is sounds- the wrong class for you or, or whatever, yeah. right? So. It, it sounds yeah. like to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it sounds almost like um, this sort of methodology is peeling back the inner expectation of what somebody wants you to do or how they want you to act. Because even having been through acting classes myself and auditions, there was so much in the beginning, especially in my 20s, like you were saying, where I was acting for whomever I was auditioning for, or whomever was teaching me. I wasn't, there was not a sense of authenticity, which is what it sounds like you guys are creating more of, that space to be your authentic self so that you're you're playing the role as you envision it. And hopefully somebody else appreciates that as opposed to, playing it for what they, what you think they want to see or hear or do? Well, I'll, I'll say specifically, Christian, one of the, like the, you know, where your brain starts to fall out of your ear when you hear Steve say, like, this is how we do it, is that you bring in sides, you bring in a piece to do with somebody, and mm-hmm. that other person doesn't see it until you arrive. You don't study it, you don't memorize it, mm-hmm. and it doesn't matter where it's from, if it's comedy, if it's drama. So you come to the material right. as you, yeah, and you, you make decisions for it. So you're throwing any kind of expectation. I mean, for me, obviously, coming heavily sitcomed, there's a musicality that I've learned to just obviously use when the material warrants it, but not rely on the shtick, which I think a lot of people have different shticks. Yeah. Um, And that's what it that's what it does. It's it's really it's kind of mind blowing. I remember talking to my mom and dad who have called this monkey business since I arrived in it, (laughs) um, trying to. They, they noticed my change once I started taking class with Steve in my emotional temperature about the business, work, me in it. Um, and that I, 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 I mean, I, I, almost want, I almost want to weep about it. He knows I get weepy. You both do. It's irritating. <laughs> but, um, you know, for, for people like my parents to notice a difference, that I am calibrated on a different level with what I do. Um, how excited I was to do it and still am. Yeah. I mean, that's really something I'd agree. for people and, who just I, aren't even remotely close to this industry to notice a change in me after decades is really impressive. You know, having done this for a long, long time, you know, I, I have a pretty good sense, I think, of what I do well and also what is not me. And, and you know, to some extent, I think you showed up ready for a change. And what's yeah. so interesting about you is that you didn't have to, but you did. You signed up for the beginner class. Like you asked for it, which was, yeah. uh, and again, I like, did. Uh, that's what people should do who come from a full career. And I you think know, so, but, but they don't cause, um, cause it's scary to go back to the beginning, but, but you went back to the beginning, which was really exciting for me because someone who's in that place is so ripe for, I mean, explosions of change which is exciting. Um, and, and, and for me says, Ooh, there's far less that needs to happen to get to some sort of place of full letting go. And then what's interesting is you describe notions of the sitcom, which is very structured, you know, it's like classical music in a lot of ways. Um, I find that you do your best work when sure you hear the music, but you're not trying to hear the music and you've let go and you've got to this place of it. And you, you <laughs> may not be word perfect this time. Like, so, so to your point, Never. Christian, you know, um, <laughs> to your point, like w- we really are like balancing structure and fluidity for sure. Right. And your job as a professional is to give them what they want, quote unquote. But but some of that is is like really taking a deep look at what do they actually want. And so the breakdown says like, you know, she's cute and sophisticated. She's a this type, but also a this type. Like it, it's, it's written to uh, try to project some sort of complicated character, but really it contradicts. And so you get all up in your head about, I'm trying to book something. So you start finding the math in it. And all of a sudden that fluidity of the human experience that I'm, I'm experiencing this in real time and having an emotional experience here, that goes out the window. So, so the question is how can we help artists find the freedom to show up to structure and find those spaces for their talent? 
Because if you're showing up and the email comes in and the agent says, okay, here's the thing. And you read the breakdown of the scene and you got to <laughs> go to that place. And it's, you know, it, Friday at 5 p.m. And like your whole, your head is just filled with structure. And what can I do to make them love me? There's no art in that. So, so we have to like really systematically start breaking down over time. And it takes time. Um, uh, an actor's need to engage their head to find the math in all of these processes and really just come back to what is my value? My value is to yeah. elevate this script to the level of the human experience and move someone on an emotional level. And that's what it is. And so um, so my job then as, as a moderator of these classes is to create the space for that. Uh, and and when those walls come up, the resistance c- comes up and indeed it will, um, it have yeah. a really good look at it and yeah. and then allow everyone to decide on their own whether that should come down or not. Well, I'll say the biggest bitch of being in your class is that I think some of my best work is there. I've I've come out of class so many times going, well, that, you know, there it is. <laughs> and and, you know, 12 people saw it and it wasn't about being seen. It was about doing it. And so that's what I kind of I'm now hearkening back to that confidence I'm talking about. It's that kind of yeah. like that is in me. I can access it anytime I want to. Um, I have to be willing and be in the right mindset, whatever. Um, but it is so interesting, Christian. I mean, sometimes you come out of there just feeling like that. I, I mean, I just hit it out of the park, you know? Um, yeah, it is a great feeling. Uh, again, like, and to, for to no me, other reason than to have the feeling. Yeah. Right. I, I would say though, that to me, that is representative of an expansion that like, if you can squat that amount of weight there, you can likely do it again somewhere else. Now, then, then you deal with the industry because because that's where one goes, right? I can do it in here, but <laughs> can I do it in the audition, right? <laughs> yeah. The, the industry may not give you the opportunity to do something like that or, um, you know, give you the circumstances within which you feel safe enough to do X, Y, or Z. But, um, and then that's on you to bridge that gap and bring that safety where with you wherever you go, you know? Right. Um, well, I, I mean, I have it. It's now, like you said, yeah. it's fluid. It comes and goes, but yeah. I've had enough experiences where just it, being in the rooms feels so different yeah. than how it used to be for me. Um, yeah. So it's, it's really remarkable. And I'm assuming that kind of work for anyone, whether it be in corporate America or uh, any other creative discipline is incredibly useful. I mean, are you finding that more and more as you expand out? Yeah, as the I mean, studio expands out. Yeah, it's 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 amazing. I mean, it's a weird so like, time to talk about this, but yeah. No, no, like around 2006, 2007, that same sort of like gut check moment of why am I doing this? I started volunteering for the first Obama campaign. And the very first training outside of Chicago, this guy named Marshall Gans, who's like genius and he worked with Cesar Chavez, he was a freedom writer. He was educating us in the training on the power of narrative and truthful emotional expression and the story of self. And I'm like, oh shit, this is, oh wow, okay. There's value in this outside of booking some CW show, you know? I mean, we should all be so lucky, but I'm saying like, there's, there's, there's value in this. Um, right. There's value in this. So, so I spent a couple of years training, training staff and volunteers how to express their emotional truth within a little 20 second, 30 second, two minute story of self. And so as whether it's Brene Brown or whoever, some of these folks, right. Oprah, have um, have had their vision kind of leak into corporate America and how this notion of softness and openness to an inclusion, those sorts of notions, then yeah, we have to talk about vulnerability. And if we don't, then um, we're not seeing clients and we're not really listening to employees or coworkers. So, so yeah, there's a lot of room for this kind of work and it's, you know, like it's, it's 0.3% of the work that you would do in class because some of this stuff scares the crap out of it, out of people, mm-hmm. but, but a human being's ability to look at another human being without being on their phone and be present with them and listen to them. And by listen, I mean, be affected by them and then offer a response that comes from listening. Like that's a revolutionary act in this day and age. So, so yeah, there's a lot True. of use for this in our lives. Uh, this, yeah. this artistry is, is important for sure. What inspires you right now? What are you inspired by in this um, current climate? Yeah, you know what's interesting is uh, um, so in March of this year, uh, when everything shut down, we thought, oh, okay, the studio's done. Like, that's it. We're done. Like, we can't, this has to happen in person. The sights and the smells, and we're done. That's it. And then um, 
you know, we were sort of working with actors worldwide on some mm-hmm. Zoom, and we're doing a little bit of it, but it was, you know, yeah. the, the bronze medal, you know, it was like not that great <laughs> relative, to, relative to what happens in class every week, right? right? And so we thought, okay, well, we're done. <laughs> but then like checking in with the actors in our studio, like 250 to 300 actors, they needed this, like on an emotional level right now more than ever, they needed this. They needed to be in community, expressing themselves, doing the work that we do. And so we said, okay, fine. Well, let's just, let's open the doors on Zoom and see what happens. Um, and and all of a sudden I found myself being born anew every class and my humanity reaffirmed in a world where there wasn't a lot of humanity. And so mm-hmm. uh, I'm still inspired right now, every single class by the actors who show up, again, under duress, um, from suffering, some more than others, but like there's deep suffering out there. Um, and it's it's real for our actors. Like it's like the financial, the actual loss of life, the the diaspora, the like all of it. And they keep yeah. showing up and doing the work. And again, like under those circumstances, speaking one's truth and being vulnerable is a revolution. Uh, and so, so that's what inspires the hell out of me. Like every single time I, I, I get so much from every single class, even if I show up as I am usually, you know, weary and having not slept because my one-year-old and like, you know, running from dropping off my six-year-old at school to like, there's no space in between anymore for me or very little. Right. And, and, and yet I'm, I'm, it's just uh, the shoulders drop and everything just aligns when I'm in the work with, with the actors who are at our studio. So have you and Risa talked about uh, a when, in classes in the studio, physical studio will reopen and resume? Yeah, we've talked about it, but I mean, I think all anyone can do is talk right now and as much as who knows, right? Like we don't know the, the I was listening to the, the daily this morning and there, you know maybe there'll be a vaccine in January, February, and then it has to roll out, et cetera. So like, we're not gonna do anything that's gonna put anyone in danger. Um, right. So whenever it's both, you know, whenever we can open safely and also within, the government, you know, regulations and right. all that sort of stuff. And even still, I'm not sure whether everyone will come back. So, and then the other thing is we've opened up to this worldwide audience all of a sudden in the last six months because people yes. can access us who haven't been in Los Angeles, New York, or Atlanta. So, so on some level, it'll be a hybrid version of this when we come back that we will have online classes um, and, and in-person classes for sure. I mean, it, it's just a new norm, right? Even the industry is going that way that, if I'm a casting director oh, yeah. and I'm doing pre-reads, why would I rent a space? Like, let's just do this on Zoom. So, um, yes. It, and then the other thing is, I wonder how many people, even in, in your class, I wonder how many people like at 5 p.m. on a Wednesday will go, eh, oh, I'll just in my living room. <laughs> oh my gosh. To not wear pants, number one. To not sit yeah. in traffic, number two. But I will say, there is, it, I don't even want to say there's, there is no substitute for being in the same room with someone because there are great substitutes, but there is something different yeah. about, you know, and, and a lot of my cohort, we've talked about it, that we miss yeah. the physicality of the work. Right. Yeah, um, but I have to say, um, on a film set, it's not the same. <laughs> like the work is not the same at work. Because of this too. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. you're not even getting that the same way yeah. you did. Yeah, absolutely. And it, like the interesting thing about Zoom and maybe everything that's happening just now, particularly for actors in the industry, is that it, it gets really challenging, more challenging, I would say, if what's happening right now is always in the context of what it was in February or always in the context of, well, when it opens X, Y, or Z, right? So like that lack of presence, you're always in this battle uh, uh, but it wasn't the way, uh, but in, you know, in six months, it'll be yeah. like, you've got zones, right. And the crew's over there <laughs> and because they can't be <laughs> yep. there. And so like, but I think the answer then for the creative person is to kick out the tent poles under which you can be present. And this is just part of the, shit, right. So if you have some yeah. sort of canned, you know, performance that you're trying to infuse into, you know, a square peg, <laughs> because COVID's changed everything, it's just not going to work, right? So you're going to have to yes and the <laughs> out of life right now, let alone yes, the work and. as an actor on set. Yes and, right. And, and we found that on Zoom too. Like it's, it was, uh, this, is, this is not the real deal, blah, blah, blah. But all of a sudden, like we're pushing the boundaries of Zoom and people are using it uh, in really interesting ways. And 
they've got two cameras going in a scene because they got their phone here and they've got you know so yeah. and they're turning here. It's it, it, we're uh, we're doing really interesting things. So again, that notion of can you find the space in between um, where it feels like there's limitation? Where is that space in between? That's the interesting thing. Yeah. Um, so I have to just tell you that um, you're one of my most favorite people on this planet. I love you. Um, and I, my love for you is so deep. And Christian sort of like, you know, uh, you've heard me talk like this, Steve, because I'm able to talk very emotionally with you. Um, but Christian was sort of just like when I was explaining who you are to me in my life was just sort of like, okay. Uh, for as, as, uh, for those of you who don't know me, I have a face that looks like I'm interested in everyone, but I'm not. Uh, (laughs) and my close circle of friends is really close. Um, and, um, you're just an incredible person to me. Um, and I love you. (laughs) I just wanted to say that publicly. Thank you, Mindy. I love you too. What's interesting though, if we need to wrap up, let me know, but this is an interesting point. (laughs) <laughs> What's interesting, I, I think like your default setting of generosity, um, I don't know that it's that your face gives that off as much as like, I, I think you are genuinely interested in a certain level of humanity as it relates to certain individuals. But then, yeah, once it gets close, close, then then you get protective. Um, yes. But but I, I, I wouldn't like I, I wouldn't dismiss the fact like you are interested in a lot of people. I think mm-hmm. you consume life. I think you're wildly interested in everyone. Yes, but that's just, that's the sociology in me. I just meant as a as someone who gets into the you know past the gateway of the aorta. Right. You know, right. you're one of those. Yeah, people. I appreciate that. Yeah, appreciate and I miss so you every single day. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get this going again. Yeah, I know we will. Yeah. Uh, Christian. This is Steve. It's I don't know amazing. how else. I'm so I'm so excited, Steve. It, it to to no end that people in my life and our listeners out there are going to get to know you a little bit. It makes me very happy. Appreciate Thank you that. so Thank much you. for being on this episode. Thank you, Mindy. Yeah. Thanks, Christian. This is pretty amazing. Thank you, Steve, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, head to mondayswithmindy.com. Once the show airs, we'll have some show notes about Steve where you can connect with him. You can connect to the studio. You can get in one of those online classes if you've never had the opportunity before because you don't live in Los Angeles or New York or Atlanta. Um, so head there, check out the show notes, learn a little bit more about Steve and his business and his methods and everything else. And once again, I want to thank Steve for being on the show. This was really, really wonderful. Very, very fascinating for me. Uh, cheers. <laughs> My thank Yay, you. Steve. Thank you all so much. Thank you, kind thank sir. You.